Yeah, it seems that there's just uh, there's been a lot of negative headlines in, in the out there on the macro front, and uh, this really pickup in the Delta variant it seemed to entice buyers, and um, it's really kind of puzzling when we look at what's happened with the economic prints. Uh, the narratives have been circling around in the last week or so is peak growth, peak earnings. Uh, but I want to remind everyone that although we may be peaking in the second quarter, uh, we still have a second half of the year that's going to deliver strong GDP as well as likely strong earnings growth. And so when you look at the GDP forecast for next year, we're still talking about a 4% real growth rate. So just on a real growth basis, uh, treasuries look extremely overvalued at these levels. And then uh, the, what's been on every investor's mind all year is inflation. And so, yes, inflation has been chalked up to transitory. Uh, there's some pieces of inflation that will be transitory, but there's also pieces of inflation that have yet to materialize that are likely to at this point in the cycle, which are more sticky. So think housing prices, think about rent, think about the potential and increase in wages. We just saw what uh, President Biden signed on an executive order trying to make a more competitive wage landscape. And so uh, I think it's too early to dismiss this transitory inflation print. And by the way, Wilfred, we get an inflation update next week. And if you look at the expectations there, whether you look at headline or core stripping out commodities, it's 40 to 50 basis points on a month over month basis. So that annualizes once again to this roughly five to six percent inflation rate. And so in general, the bond market over the last couple of weeks is not jiving with the fundamentals. And there really isn't this reason to be this nervous about the global growth story. So to really answer your question, I think you've seen foreign demand pick up. Uh, you've seen buyers there as on a hedge basis back to local currency, both in treasuries and investment rate corporates, uh, make some sense at these levels for those foreign investors. And I think because they're in the center of this Delta variant right now, they're looking for some safety. Jeff, if you think that most of these moves have been based on technicals rather than fundamentals, do you think Fed policy is appropriate right now? Well, I think you've seen a lot from the Fed right now saying that they, they, they really harp on what I'll call the T word, not the not the inflation word, but transitory, that inflation is transitory. And so uh, there was a lot of uh, um, noise made about the median dots increasing at the last uh, the, the last Fed meeting. And if you look at it, there was massive dispersion and uncertainty around where policy will be in 18 months time. And so when you got the Fed minutes this week, well, all it said was that they were talking about potentially tapering. There was no consensus whatsoever. And so I think the policy is adequate. They say they want to run the economy hot. They're running the economy hot. We're growing at the fastest pace we've ever seen um, and since, you know, really in most of my career. If you look at the year-over-year -year numbers, now Grant's off of a very low level. But we're back above trend line growth. We're, we're poised to get there. And so that's what the Fed wants. Remember, they don't just focus on inflation. They also are talking about the labor market. And we still see challenges in the labor market. So there's the push effect from the inflation side where they should be thinking about tightening policy sooner than later, but there's the pull effect where the labor market is in recovery. So I think the Fed's doing the best they can. The markets are awash with liquidity. And I think what you see is people just need places to put money to work. The banking system has not been lending as much because corporate America balance sheets are flush, but also the consumer is as well. And with the consumer being flush, there's not the need for as many loans out there. So that's where I think you've seen this bank demand over the last quarter or so that's kind of caused a little bit of this rally. But we're just not buying into this rally. We don't think that you should be increasing the duration or interest rates in the portfolio. In fact, it's time to reduce some of that. And, and you have a good chance to still do so right now. And that also means reducing some of your exposure to investment grade corporate bonds because they have significant amounts of duration risk in them as well. So how quickly, Jeff, could yields rise again? Uh, would next week's CPI be a potential trigger if it comes in a bit hotter than expected? Yeah, I think everybody's going to dig through the hood, Wilfred. And, that, and that's the key here, too, is because we know that the numbers are going to be large. They're going to be some of the largest we've seen. You know, when you look at some of the core uh, CP, uh, sorry, PCE that the Fed uses, or if you look at core CPI, I mean, these prints are at 30 and 40 year highs. And so that's not going to stop in the short term. I'm sympathetic to the idea that supply chains are constrained and that, you know, some of these things will work out, but they're not going to work out in a month or two. And I, I really think that people are going to see is this owner's equivalent rent, the housing market, which is a big piece of CPI. It's going to start to march upwardness in a meaningful manner. And if we get back to pre-crisis levels of where that number was printing, it's about 1% higher. Well, that's another half a percent or 40 to 50 basis points of, of increase in CPI. So I think the bond market's going to say, 
wait a second, you know, what have we been doing here? Uh, we've been buying to these narratives out there. And ultimately, do I really want to lock myself in to getting these negative real yields across the curve? So even the five-year Treasury, to me, seems like a bad place to hide out at this point because it's the most susceptible to the inflation as well as Fed policy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.